Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the current Outside Views report on Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. Ukrainian sea drones are chasing Russian ships in the Black Sea. In videos published by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, they approach ships unnoticed, and then the explosives, weighing up to 450 kilograms, explode. Last weekend, it hit the Russian tanker SIG and apparently the landing ship Olenegorsky Gornyak, and Russia has partially acknowledged the attacks. After the Black Sea had only rarely been the focus of the Russian war of aggression against Ukraine, fighting is now piling up. The sea is increasingly becoming part of the battlefield, the popular holiday area, a dangerous war cattle. And this is no coincidence, because in addition to Ukraine and Russia, the neighboring countries also include three NATO countries, which further increases tensions. In addition, the body of water is important for Ukraine's grain exports. It also seems almost strange that the sea is a popular destination for tourists, especially in the summer. Many Russians vacation in Crimea, and thousands of people also sunbath on beaches in Turkey, Bulgaria, and Romania. And those, there, there are st two worlds colliding in the Black Sea at the moment. Vladimir Putin's war has long since turned the sea into a body of water full of contrasts, in which Ukraine, Russia, and NATO are sometimes pursuing very different interests. So let's have a look at the Black Sea from three, three perspectives. For Ukraine, the Black Sea coast is vital for the domestic economy. Ukraine initially lost access to the Sea of Azov in the first year, but with the recapture of Cherson by the Ukrainian army, further Russian advances towards Odessa currently appear unlikely. But there is a problem for the leadership in Kiev. Ukraine does not actually have a navy. Russian sea sovereignty can therefore only be broken with naval mines, anti-ship missiles and drones. But there was a respectable success. The Russian Black Sea fleet had to be relocated from Sevastopol to Novorossiysk, and warships are now keeping their distance from the Ukrainian coast. And Ukraine sees a threefold benefit in the attacks on the Black Sea. On the one hand, every Russian warship sunk is a propaganda success at a time when the Ukrainian offensive is making slow progress. In addition, Ukraine is showing with the attacks that it has not given up a square meter of its territory, including Crimea. In addition, the extension of the war to Russian ports is set to bring further problems to Putin's economy. More than 3% of the world's oil and oil products are transported across the Black Sea. The Kremlin strategy in the early months of the invasion appeared to be to cut off Ukraine from the Black Sea. That failed for the time being, but Russia has occupied three major Ukrainian ports since the beginning of the war. It has heavily mined the waters, neutralized the Ukrainian navy, and imposed a blockade on civilian shipping to and from all Ukrainian controlled ports. Putin regards the Black Sea as Russian waters, and the illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014 is at the core of his war ideology. The ideological significance even goes so far that the Kremlin encourages his people to vacation in Crimea, despite drone strikes and Ukrainian attacks on the Crimean bridge. As recently as July, Russian Transport Minister Vitaly Savelyev suggested a meeting with Putin that Russian citizens should use the land corridor to travel to the peninsula if possible. So Moscow promotes travel through a war zone. And Putin apparently wants to convey the impression of normality in front of his population. He fears the military sinking in the Black Sea. But for some Russians who were temporarily unable to leave the peninsula after the attacks on the Crimean bridge, the vacation turned into a nightmare. We were told, come to Crimea, it's safe you, we believed it. And how are we going to get home? That's what a Russian tourist from St. Petersburg complained to Telegram. Control of the Black Sea is a war goal for Russia. Putin has been trying to increase his influence around the water for years. For example, Russia is investing in the development of coastal ports and resort towns and Russian military power in naval bases in the region. 
It is also about pushing back NATO in the Black Sea and maintaining good relations with Turkey. But Putin's plan doesn't seem to be working. With its member states Turkey, Bulgaria and Romania, NATO is a direct riparian of the Black Sea. And even before the start of the Russian war of aggression, there were tensions with Russia. In the summer of 2021, for example, the British destroyer HMS Defender steered into the Black Sea, whereupon Russian fighter jets dropped four aerial bombs on the ship's course. That's muscle flexing that almost led to an escalation. And Russia's war in Ukraine has further aggravated the situation. The NATO is conducting surveillance flights over the waters and in March Russian fighter jets forced a US drone to crash. The Black Sea is now a conflict zone, a war zone that is just as relevant to NATO as Western Ukraine. That was said by Ivo Dalda, a former US ambassador to NATO, and he told this the New York Times in early August. In fact, Russian aggression is also a threat to important ports in Romania or Bulgaria. Both countries are NATO members, as I said. Romania controls 30,000 square kilometers in the Black Sea. But that's not easy. Russian ships regularly turn up in the country's economic zone. And that is why the Romanian Navy is constantly on the alert, especially since Romanian ports are central to supplying Ukraine and exporting Ukrainian grain. And meanwhile, Turkey is playing a special role in the Black Sea conflict. Although President Recep Tayyip Erdogan controls the Bosporus, he also fears a further escalation with Russia on his doorstep and is therefore critical of NATO missions in the inland waters. Turkey has asked its allies not to send warships and Erdogan was only able to gain calm by banning Russian warships from passing through. This also eased the US pressure on Turkey, but NATO wants to become more present in the region in the future. Ultimately, a highly fragile field of tension has built up in the Black Sea there. And while NATO supports Ukraine, it also wants to avoid a direct escalation with Russia and continue to allow exports of grain and Russian oil across the waters. That's a difficult goal in a sea where the situation is getting worse and worse now. And if you want to know more about the developments in this war, the next video is right here on the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.